What's up, boys? Good hey, morning. Kevin, Good morning, Kevin, bud. Kevin, I hope you heard my advice pre-Thanksgiving. I, I said to all Commanders fans, like, have a side eye towards the Commanders. Don't let them completely ruin your Thanksgiving because it's probably not going to be pretty. And it was it was actually uglier than I thought it would be. Yeah, it ruined mine because I had them plus 14. Oh, <laughs> no. no. What made me <laughs> plus 14. That's to trouble. do that. That's not um, great. Yeah, not great, but uh, no, I, I I don't know about you guys um, in terms of, you know, I know not all of you are hardcore fans, but it I've lost that thing for the Skins Cowboys. Hopefully, you know, you get it back in the coming years, but mm-hmm. it didn't feel like it. Um, it wasn't a big deal playing on Thanksgiving. And this team, I mean, I think we know where it's headed. You know, this season's going to end. There's going to be a major regime change. All the football people, you know, most of them, you know, will be out and there will be a whole new regime in. And I kind of look forward to seeing what that looks like, you know, especially when it'll be the first time in a quarter century where the next group isn't picked by Dan Snyder. Do you think there's actually going to be any holdovers? Like, do you have a couple names that you're thinking that that you might like to see or that might actually survive the purge that's coming? Well, I mean, whenever you hire, like, so if, if a general manager comes in, hires a, a new head coach, he's not going to be able to bring in everybody that he wants to bring in. So there will be people that may be on the current staff that will stick. I think the big one, obviously, is Eric Bieniemy. You know, whether or not the new head coach, whomever that is, first of all, whether or not Eric Bieniemy gets a shot at interviewing for the head coaching job, if that's a general manager's choice in terms of if they go in that direction, a general manager coming up with the candidates and then hiring the, you know, interviewing the candidates and hiring one of them. Um, but the enemy is the big one, you know, you know, will his, you know, mentorship, his offensive coordinatorship over Sam Howell um, lead to something together here next year? I mean, that's the big question over the final you know, six games here, five games, is do you have a quarterback and will the offensive coordinator be a guy that the new head coach, if it's not him, wants to keep? Yeah, here's the thing, though. Like, they're they're performing so poorly that they might just stumble into having to take a quarterback. They're going to be drafting so high, right? And I like how. I'd love to build around him. But I'm not going to turn down Caleb Williams, right, if, if, if I get an opportunity to draft him or whoever else is the next sexy guy, Drake May, whoever it is. And here's the thing with Bienemy, Kevin, that we've been talking about. bienemy has been given so much authority and so much free reign. There is He's basically n- running the show. There's no way a new staff <laughs> is going to come in here and say, yeah, we'll let Eric be the man. Yeah. And he can still do everything he's doing now. And then we'll have some marginal role. On- That's just not going to Especially it's, since it's he, already, work. he already has the reputation, Kevin, you know this, of wanting all the power. That's what the reput- his reputation over in that building is. All right, I'm running the show. Right. So a new guy's not going to come and say, "All right, Ben, I mean, you're you're the so guy," and have to battle be the head over that guy, or yeah. he's going to have to find a new spot. Yeah, yeah, no, I think that makes sense. I think you know the new guy is going to want to have his group, and if his yeah. group and there's no tie to Eric Bieniemy to where they can make it work with Eric Bieniemy as the offensive coordinator in the way that the new guy wants to make it work, yeah, it's probably a whole new regime and and with respect to the the comment about quarterbacks of course i mean at yeah. this point they're number 5 right now i think in draft right. position they could go higher between now and the end of the year i mean how many games are they really going to win down the stretch um you'd be insane not to consider quarterback i mean sam howell has grown there's something there For but sure. is it special um, not that you're going to get it in the draft because it's a total crapshoot total. even at the yeah. highest levels of the draft. But you've got to at least consider going for something that is, you know, super high end um, unless he convinces you that he can be that over the final five games. I mean, to me, he's shown hard. a lot. Uh, it's much lot. more encouraging than discouraging. But, you know, it's been up and down for sure. The one thing that's surprising me, and, you, you know, we've talked about this throughout the show this morning, is – how you can lead, you can ask your quarterback who played one r- regular season game last year. You can ask that kid to lead the league in attempts, th- th- and th- not that, expect to have some terrible moments. Well, just I mean, to, just to ask him to do that. Yeah. To, and I, one of the more shocking things to me, Kevin, is that he hasn't missed any games as much as he's dropped back and as much as he's been hit. <laughs> 
I can't believe. And look at all. Look at how many quarterbacks have played. I mean, some teams are on their third and fourth quarterback. And when he runs, yeah. he gets pummeled. I, I am shocked that he hasn't missed games yet. Yeah, I mean, he is definitely a guy that takes a lot of shots and seems to bounce right back up, and and he's been fine. Uh, you know, I think what we've seen, though, and the attempts, it's an outrageous number. I mean, mm-hmm. this is going to be looked back on, and we'll, you know, if he ends up being kind of a legitimate starting quarterback in the league, we may look back on it and say it was genius. Uh, by Eric Bieniemy to just throw him into the fire and let him set the NFL record for attempts in a season and and imagine how much he's throwing in the in practice considering how much they're throwing in the games too, but I think the last five weeks in particular has been different. He's be he's been more of a distributor, you know, true kind of West Coast offense. You know, quick game primarily. Uh, we see what happens typically when there's pure drop back. It's usually not great. That's usually when the sacks happen and some of the bad plays happen. But I kind of like what we've seen over the last five weeks, and I'm not hung up on pass to run ratio because they've moved the football. I know the point totals aren't great, and that's you know that ultimately that's that's everything but this isn't a team that that lines up and goes three and out and is impotent offensively they're actually pretty capable offensively with him in the role he's been in since that first giant game which is much more of a distributor now when he does drop back sometimes it's good because he creates and he's really good off schedule and extending plays but I don't mind the offense that we've seen over the last five weeks. Kevin, what really surprises me about the offense, especially with how passing the ball so much, I if you told me he was passing the ball this much before the season, I'd say, well, McLaurin and Dotson are both going to have right. massive yeah. years. And that hasn't happened. McLaurin's mm-hmm. 25th in the league in receiving at under 700 yards, and Dotson's way below that. Uh, he's just spreading the ball around to anybody and everybody instead of like, majoring in, hey, these are your top two weapons. These are the guys we're going to force feed the ball to. You have not seen that with the enemy's offense. Yeah, well, especially, you know, over the last five weeks where he's <laughs> really spread it around and they've had, you know, sort of a game plan and and called plays where it's designed to get it out of his hands quickly, whether it's to a back or bubble screen. But how about this one, guys? And I talked about this last week. If I told you back in August or right before the opener against Arizona that through 12 games, Sam Howell's going to lead the league in interceptions and lead the league in sacks allowed, would you even think he'd be playing Mm -hmm. at this point? No, he leads no. the league in interceptions, leads the league in sacks allowed by a long shot, too, and as pick we know sixes. with the sacks allowed. Tied and, for uh, the league lead in pick sixes as well. Yeah, and so it, it kind of says something that everything else that he's done, for the most part, has been pretty positive, or he wouldn't be in there. Right. And so I wanted to turn the tables and, and, and talk about the defense. So Jack Del Rio gets fired. He's the fall guy. Um, I know you talk to Cooley all the time for your podcast. I'm wondering... Like, why has the defense failed? They were number three last year in yardage. They were number seven in points per game. What has happened? Jack Del Rio didn't forget how to coach. Just the, they didn't the just defense fail. fell apart this they year. They collapsed. Yes. What happened? Can, can you put your finger on it? Has anybody been able to say, this is why? God, I mean, you know, it's everybody that I have on that is much more expert than any of us. Mm -hmm. You know, I always say, look, obviously it's the explosives. I understand that. They lead the league in allowing the big play. We, We can identify the number one reason this defense has been such a massive disappointment, but why? Why have they given up so many explosives? And nobody ever seems to have, like, a real clear-cut answer. I mean, I have Jay on my podcast every week, too. And, you know, what he says is they've played more man than zone, and they were a better zone match team last year. They've played more man coverage this year. They drafted a corner that was more kind of eyes on quarterback zone corner in, um, in Emmanuel Forbes. But, you know, ultimately, it's like... You, your coverage and your pass rush has not been good enough, nowhere near good enough. And so they have been just riddled with, because you'll, you'll have series, right? We've seen this throughout the year where it's like, oh, that was pretty good. They stopped the run. They, you know, got two TFLs. They, they had put some pressure on and forced an incompletion and a punt. And then the next drive, it's like 28 yards, 22 yards, 
you know, 17 yards. I, I don't have an answer for it, but – um, you know, some will say Jack's been way too vanilla. He's way too predictable. But he was that to a certain degree last year. And by most advanced numbers, they were a legitimate top 10 defense a year ago with largely the same players. Here's one thing that's true, guys, is that since the trades, the specific trade of Chase Young, when they leaked out the information that this is addition by subtraction, mm-hmm. I'm not saying that they'd be a lot better with Chase Young, but it certainly hasn't been addition by subtraction. It, it isn't any better than it was, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Well, because the the depth is affected, and especially yeah. when one of those guys who is backing up the guys you traded gets hurt and is out. I mean, you, you know, you're down to guys who weren't even seeing the field in the first 10 weeks. So it's, it's Here, certainly an, it's a, an effect and, here, and yeah, negative. It, it, yeah, and I was, let me just make one thing clear. Mm-hmm. I, I was okay with them trading Chase Young mm-hmm. ultimately yeah, because most it were, was yeah. not a fit, and there were a lot of issues there, as we all know and have known mm-hmm. for a while. I'm just saying I, I still think that that was low rent on the organization's part to leak out that stuff about a guy that they traded. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, he, here's what I fear now. Because of the utter and complete collapse of the defense, uh, that we're now going to go back and we're going to kind of – we're going to do the same thing that we just did. We're going to go, we're going to go draft a couple uh, defensive ends and pass <laughs> rushers, and we're going to have a team built around defense, and we still haven't fixed the offensive line. You know, this is a, yeah, what this if is they a hired defensive head coach? Oh, what if they hired me. Dan it, Quinn? Impossible. You know? Impossible. And, and yeah. they've been happen. bad, and they need to fix. I mean, we got so well, many Well, it's holes. not going to be fixed overnight. It's not. It never is. It's not going to be fixed overnight. So you, you might address some of these holes this year, but you're not going to fix everything. I know. Overnight. I just don't want to address them in the. I don't want to build this team and have all my first round picks be on the defensive side of the ball. And I can, I can see us going right down the same highway. Well, let's see. Let's I see. Right. Do you well, agree? I mean, I, I think it's interesting because, like, bef- before all off season, right, the two givens were well, they got a really good defensive front and they've got a really good <clears throat> receiving core, right. And they don't have a really good defensive front, not this year. I still think Allen and Payne are good players. Don't mm-hmm. get me wrong. You flip it to the other side, you know, I think we've learned this year, and I feel badly for him. It's a new offense every year, and he really hasn't had a quarterback until Sam who can actually throw the football. Mm -hmm. But Terry's a number one, but he's not an elite receiver. Right. So they may be looking for help there, too, in the offseason. So what if they go into the draft drafting defensive linemen and wide receivers oh, with always, a defensive head coach? I'm always that warmed would, up for wide receivers, Kevin. You know that. So I'd be <laughs> cool with that. Let's go. That would thrill the fan base. <laughs> mm. Well, what if they took Brock Bowers out of Georgia? Well, that's different. Tight end. I mean, that's a tight end, and that's a big-time tight end in right. a league that if you have one of those kind of great tight ends, it seems to always be I – mean, um, and tight end, it, that position is changing because they're getting more athletic, and yeah. they're, you know, a lot of them are, are. You can see them in the slots. I mean, all these top tight ends are basically just big receivers now. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, and he's really going to be. He's going to he be a stud. Like he's going to be the next one. Yeah. Did you see this coming a month ago? Haven't we seen this kind of coming from the beginning of the year? Like I. I I think that the 2-0 and start was a severe head fake, obviously. <laughs> um, and and there, there was some, you know, uh, hope, you know, that maybe this season could be a good season. I kind of felt that way to a certain degree um, after they, you know, b- beat the Falcons. Or maybe it was after the Eagles get lost, but then they beat the Patriots, could have beaten the Seahawks. Um, but we've known that this was a kind of a lame duck season for Ron and his staff, barring, you know, a 10 or an 11 win season with at least one playoff win. I think almost everybody kind of uh, said that prior to the season. I'm guessing everybody said that. Yeah, but we didn't see the the, the two losses of the Giants, uh, the no. loss of the Bears. They're going to finish 5-12. and 12. I mean, or four and thirteen. I didn't. Yeah, see I don't no, know that, that anybody thought true. that was going to happen. I didn't see this. That's true. Four, four and thirteen, five and twelve. Mm-hmm. You know, six and eleven. I thought that going in, dead wrong. I thought they were too good defensively this year. Yeah, me too. To to really tank, even and if Sam turned out to play. be a bad quarterback. Yeah, yeah, I figured they'd have better quarterback play and they'd have a really good defense, probably a top ten. Yeah, maybe even a top five defense. Yeah. And of course they'll be better than last year, even though the schedule is right. difficult. I and I Kev, 
I was I put a sizable bet on over six and a half wins. <laughs> I took him over six and a half too. Yeah, lose it. And, and so that number, I did too. I keep forgetting. You that. guys gonna have a pity party. It's not as bad that. as your Wizards overplay. Yeah. I did the Wizards I over twenty four twenty four and a half. <laughs> you might as well just. Not, they might not get over four and a half. <laughs> but yeah. uh, I did not. I thought I didn't think they were a playoff team, Kev. I thought they were a seven and ten team. I thought they were yeah, going to be really I thought, close. I thought they'd win seven or eight. Exactly. Yeah. Um, not four or five, which is where they're headed right now. I mean, who are they legitimately going to beat? I mean, the Rams are playing better now, and they're they're actually in a wild card race. That's yep. the, the that's two games away after a bye week. They may get Aaron Rodgers on Christmas Eve. They're not going to beat the Niners. <laughs> they're not going to beat the Dolphins. And if the Cowboys have anything to play with, not play four, they're not yeah. going to beat the no, Cowboys. I mean, if they so, get a win, it'll be a one-off random thing. Right. Yeah. It means nothing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. One and one and four or whatever to finish this yeah, thing. You guys up need like three wins. Five I mean, win your, season. Your tickets to cash. No, that's a loser. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if they can't beat Tommy DeVito, they're not beating Tim Boyle. Nope. No, nope. on the road, probably not. I mean, I, I don't well, know if Aaron well, Tommy be DeVito's back. got a two-game win streak going right now. He's got a heater. Yeah, sign him to a big contract. <laughs> hey, they're worse quarterbacks. I don't know if you watch the game. They're worse yeah, quarterbacks. No. Than I mean, Tommy I, DeVito. And, and I wouldn't. I mean, I think look the, the through twelve games, the most promising part of this season is Sam Howell. Mm-hmm. Whether or not he is special. Mm-hmm. Probably not, but could he be the best they've had since Cousins? There's a chance. Oh, he and so you want to start, the, you know, you'd want to build around that guy unless you end up with the opportunity to get. I mean, to me, Daniels would be. I don't care where you're picking. If if May and Caleb Williams are off the board, I'd still consider Daniels. Jason Daniels. Daniels. Yeah, he's a stud. All right, Kevin. but again, like you said, drafting quarterbacks in the first round is flip the right. coin. Flip and we it. don't know what they'll know about these kids and yeah. whether or not, you know, the, all the stuff that we don't have a chance to know uh, about, all the due diligence, all of the interviews, you know, does he love football? Does he have great work ethic? Is he going to be, you know, good in the locker room? All of those things, uh, you know, are big with every player, but especially the quarterback. Mm-hmm. All right, Kevin, have a good show. 10 to 1 right, on Team 980. That's our pal Kevin Sheehan. Thank you, buddy.